Hey, oh, wait a minute. That'll never do. There, that's better. How y'all doing this morning? My name is Tom Rigsby. This is seven minutes in the morning. You've stumbled across my technology challenged attempt to communicate every day. So uh, it is Friday, last day of the week. Last day of the work week. Last day of the work week. You know, I was having this conversation with somebody yesterday, I think. Maybe it was Wednesday. Every day is a work day. It's just some days you can talk to clients and some days you can't. That's all. That uh, I'm pretty sure that message came across. Uh, hang on. See, now I've got to answer that. Okay. Pretty sure that message came across uh, Facebook somewhere, one of the entrepreneur groups that I'm in. But um, that actually might be something we need to talk about in relation to overwhelm and burnout. Actually taking a day off. Actually, we did talk about that, didn't we? So on Monday, all week this week, we've been talking about burnout and overwhelm. On Monday, we talked about uh, what if you, uh, one of the signs or symptoms is that you can't relax, you can't recharge. And then Tuesday, you're just being sick and tired, sick all the time, can't. All those are signs, symptoms uh, that you're headed into burnout. All week I've been promising I'm going to give you some tips and tactics and tricks to get past that. Today's the day on Free Coaching Friday that we're going to talk about that. So if you know somebody who has had, who is or is subject to or might be um, needing, we'll just call it that, needing this conversation about how to beat overwhelm, go ahead and send them a message. I'm going to loiter here for a second, take care of some housekeeping business, send them a message, tag them in a comment, get them over here so they can see what it is we're talking about. And while you're down in the comments, you can do what Joe's already done this morning. Good morning to you, sir. Just leave me a comment, say hi, let me know that you're here. That does two things, encourages me, let, cause, you know, I like to know I'm talking to somebody. Uh, and it also gets you set up uh, to get comments, to, to stay engaged in the comments uh, as they go on. So go ahead and drop those down there, and uh, we'll go from there. So let's see. This week we've been talking about burnout, overwhelm, the things that um, some of the signs and symptoms. I've touched on a couple of them already. If every curveball becomes a crisis, that might be a sign. If, and then yesterday we talked about these self-fulfilling prophecies, creating your own, um, creating your own challenge. So today I want to talk to you about the root cause of burnout and especially overwhelm. The root cause of burnout comes from avoiding FUD. How about that? Avoiding FUD. You know what FUD is? Fear, uncertainty, and doubt. So, Fear, uncertainty, I have said, you've heard me say many, many times, two things drive all human action, right? Pleasure and pain. Fear, uncertainty, and doubt are the avoidance of pain, right? Those are the emotions associated with the avoidance of pain, and they are super motivators, right? If you want to make somebody run, look, I don't know if she's watching. She might be watching. I know she can hear me down the hall. My wife used to run a lot. And she'd say, oh, come on, run with me. Nope, run every step I'm going to run in my life. Unless, you know, one of you guys are on fire or somebody's chasing us. You want to motivate somebody to run that had not run in a long time, put some fear behind them. They'll run, right? Fear, uncertainty, and doubt. Those things motivate. They're great motivators for action or inaction. So, so we have to mitigate the effects of fear, uncertainty, and doubt if we're going to beat uh, burnout and overwhelm. I mean, otherwise, we, we can't, it's just like light and dark, right? Either the light's on or the light's off. It's not kind of on, right? It's not kind of off, right? There's um, all kinds of examples that go along with that. Either you, well started to say either you win or lose, but that's up for debate now, apparently. So, so here's what I want to talk about. Tell you how to beat fear, uncertainty, and doubt. Number one, you're not going to be surprised by this one. Know your outcome. Right? 
Think about it this way. If you go into the office every day with no particular outcome in mind, you're just going into work, how will you know if you've been successful or not? And this is one of the first questions that I ask people when they say they're overwhelmed. I'm like, okay, what are you trying to do? Well, I've got this and this and this and this and this and this. And well, which one's most important? Well, they're all important. Then none of them are important. Right? You have to know the outcome that you are trying to create. If you don't know the outcome you're trying to create, it's kind of like uh, Alice in Wonderland. You don't know where you're going. Any road is fine. Know the outcome you're trying to create. That gets us to number two, choosing milestones. It's fine to say, I want to build a scale model of the Taj Mahal. Okay, great. But there are steps associated with that. And you need those milestones. And here's why. This is a brain science, hacking your brain kind of thing, all right? So we need those milestones because they work like finish lines. So I, I told you, uh, was it last week? Yeah, last week, two weeks ago. Around Thanksgiving, we went out to Houston to visit the daughter, 13 hours out there, 13 hours back, 26 hours worth of windshield time. And even though the goal was to get to Houston or to get to Huntsville, right, you, you mentally break the trip up if you've ever driven anywhere, right? It's like, where's the next exit? Where's the state line? Where's halfway? Right? We have all of these, we, we create all of these imaginary milestones along the way so that we can measure progress. Yet, when we are working on a big project, we think we don't have to do that. Well, I can't celebrate success. I'm not finished yet. Of course you can, if you set the milestones. And then, and this is key, align those milestones toward the outcome. You can't have one over here and one over here and one up here and one down there. Right? You got to keep them all in line, going in the same direction. Right? So know the outcome. Number two, create milestones. To get you there. Now, the re I said there was some brain science here. The, the brain science behind this is when you reach a milestone, a finish line, and you can celebrate, get that little hit of dopamine, that gives you a little juice to keep going and the desire to do it again. Right? So you're, you're using your brain's own chemistry to help you achieve the outcome. And then number three, focus. Ooh, bad word. Right? But you have to focus on the outcome. That uh, the the next most immediate outcome. You know, I had this discussion and talked a little bit about this yesterday about whether we can really multitask or not. And and maybe I I have thought about this a little bit more. I don't believe we can multitask. I uh, I just don't believe our brains are wired that way in the general sense. But maybe the argument should be not that we can't, but that we shouldn't. Because when we're able to focus on that one thing, just like we said yesterday, where focus goes, energy flows, right? When I'm able to focus on that one milestone, that one step that's getting me toward the outcome that I'm trying to create, man, then great things can happen, right? Right? Because I can put all of my time, energy, and attention onto this one thing and get it done. And then when I get that done, it keeps me moving forward. Now, so those are the three things. Know the outcome, set milestones, focus on the next milestone. What does that have to do with fear, uncertainty, and doubt? One, fear is a result of uncertainty. I don't know what's going to happen, so I'm afraid. So let's create, let's get rid of uncertainty. We do that by creating our own outcome. All right? We've created the path. The uncertainty is removed. I know that this is where we're going to go. Will things happen or on, you know, 13 hour trip? Do you run into construction? Do you run into college football traffic? You got, yeah, all those things happen, right? But you've got a plan and you can now use that plan to help you get around that. And the doubt, doubting whether it's going to happen or not, again, comes from uncertainty, is rooted in uncertainty, right? Uh, I don't know what today holds. That's because you didn't plan the day. Plan your day. And if you have, and I get this objection all the time, well, Tom, you don't understand. People come to me all the time with, with different things. Right? Okay, then plan some time in your day to handle those different things. Right? Do 
30 minutes first thing in the morning, uh, an hour before lunch, an hour after lunch, 30 minutes at the end of the day. Two hours a day to handle everybody else's problems. You have to make it work for you. But if you fail to plan, you're planning to fail. All right. All week we've been talking about burnout and overwhelm, talked about some of the signs and symptoms. If you missed any of those, go back and watch those. They're all on the page at Tom Riggs, let's see, yeah, TomRigsby.com slash Facebook. And then today we talked about the three tips to avoid or to, to, uh, to permanent, what do I call it? To overcome burnout, overcome, no, yeah. Oh, beat overwhelm. I had to look over here in my note. How to beat overwhelm, right? Know the outcome, create milestones, and then focus on the next milestone. I hope that's been helpful. If it has, share this with your network and leave me a note down there. Let me know that you've benefited from this, that you want me to keep doing this kind of stuff. That would be helpful for me. All right, that's it for this week. Have a fantastic weekend. I'll be back here Monday morning with another brand new installment. Seven minutes in the morning. You guys have a great weekend. I'll talk to you then.